some sounds are required for everyday functioning what is noise it is the unwanted sound in our environment now it is also recognized that noise is one of the major stress factors we all know that stress in modern life leads to a number of lifestyle diseases one of the factors which cause stress is now recognized as noise noise pollution or unwanted or excessive sound can have damaging effects on human health we will discuss about these effects a little later various sources of noise are there they vary according to the setting for those who stay or work around railway junctions bus depots airports etc the levels of exposure to noise are particularly high noise or sound has two characteristics the intensity or loudness frequency or pitch intensity is measured in decibels 60 decibel would mean 60 times more intense than the lowest discernible noise which is taken to be the reference value frequency is measured in hertz human ear can identify from 20 hertz to 20000 hertz so below 20 hertz the sound is called as infra audible more than 20000 hertz ultrasonic some animals can hear sounds outside this range phon is an index of intensity of sound which also takes into account the frequency this slide shows some decibel levels of everyday sounds so when you whisper you produce around 20 decibels of sound and when a jet takes off it produces as much as 150 decibel of noise this slide shows the sounds produced in decibels by different activities in ascending order the red line shows the acceptable maximum exposure that is 85 decibels after which health effects start to appear this table shows the acceptable level of noise in different common settings like residential settings hospitals commercial areas this is the acceptable levels of noise in these areas you can see that instead of decibels dba has been used as a unit now dba is used because it's not just the loudness that affects the human hearing it is also the response of the human ear to the loudness so these are combined and a weighted curve is made called curve a you don't have to understand the details of this curve just have to know that the effect of sound on ear has also been taken into account and dba is a better measure of intensity of sound than just decibels a brief about some instruments used in the study of noise sound level meter as the name explains it measures the intensity of sound in either db or in either decibels or dba octave band frequency analyzer this again as the name explains measures the noise in octave bands that is the noise is a mixture of different pitches so it creates a plot which shows that the sound spectrum is mainly high pitch or mainly low pitch and or it vary it's variable audio meter is of use for a clinician audio meter is a machine which is used to measure the hearing capability of human beings on the right side you can see is uh, as is an audiogram of a patient the zero line at the top it shows normal hearing noise induced hearing dip as you can see here you can see the graph of plot of hearing is going parallel to the zero line but at 4000 hertz there is a dip and then again it goes back near to the normal hearing so this dip at 4000 hertz frequency is characteristic of noise induced hearing loss health effects of exposure to noise can be both auditory that is affecting the hearing and the ear 
and non auditory that is other systems of the body other than the hearing system auditory effects include auditory fatigue there is whistling and buzzing sounds in the ear which are coming from nowhere but they are just heard this appears when the exposure is around 90 decibels and affects the mostly the frequency of 4000 hertz that is you hear the sound in this frequency range and the hearing loss is also in this frequency range only deafness or hearing loss the victim is usually himself unaware especially in the initial stages the hearing loss may be temporary or may even be permanent temporary hearing loss can occur due to one episode of loud noise exposure also this temporary hearing loss disappears after some time of exposure usually up to it stays up to 24 hours following one episode and the frequency most affected in the hearing loss are between 4000 to 6000 hertz permanent hearing loss can occur if the exposure is repeated or continuous to sound sounds above 100 decibels most of the occupational hearing loss that is hearing loss occurring in workers at airports railway stations noisy factories is because of this noise induced permanent hearing loss an exposure to a very loud noise that is above 160 decibels can even rupture the tympanic membrane the damage in the hearing loss damage to the ear varies from minor changes in the hair cell in the inner ear to complete destruction of the organ of cauti non auditory effects that is effect of noise exposure to other other system of the body it interferes with speech so you have to speak loudly you can get tired speaking because for any meaningful conversation your speech volume should exceed the ambient sounds by 12 decibels then annoyance you get annoyed by too much of noise around you that annoyance is actually a stress on your body reduction in efficiency when you study try to study in noisy areas your concentration falters if you are being you doing some important work in noisy atmosphere your efficiency definitely reduces then some physiological changes in body physiological changes means changes effects on the various body functions various body systems as we discussed there is a release of stress hormones which leads to many effects like rise in blood pressure rise in intracranial pressure increase in heart rate it interferes with sleep interrupted sleep itself can lead to number of health effects then economic loss as discussed above the productivity reduces in a noisy environment workers who are exposed to noisy environment have been found to be more irritated short tempered they are more likely to agitate and disrupt production so less productivity also occupational health claims to the industry by various workers who have been affected due to exposure to noise this picture shows that all the systems of the body are in some way affected by exposure to noise how can we control noise pollution the planning we can do it in the planning stages of the cities we can plan separate industrial and transport zone that is separated from the residential areas residential areas should be separated from the main streets by green belts houses should not be less than 15 meters away from main street which has a lot of noise due to traffic and those 15 meters distance should also have thick plantation of trees and bushes which will absorb the sound widening of main streets to ease the traffic then control of vehicles heavy vehicles should not be allowed on narrow streets prohibiting indiscriminate blowing of horn the car horn truck horn etc and improving the acoustic insulation of the buildings that people stay and work in 
various suggestions for soundproofing of the buildings they usually come from the students of this lecture protection of the exposed those who are exposed anyway can be protected by, by providing them protective equipment if the exposure to noises more than 85 decibel is there then rotating the workers between noisy and relatively quieter areas by rotation and despite taking the above protective measures periodic audiograms should be done of the workers so that any hearing loss is detected early and measures are taken to prevent any deterioration and finally legislation for example compensation to the workers who have affect who are affected by the noise exposure this way companies will also take care that they use all the protective measures for their workers and last but not the least health education if we have not planned the cities there is no control on vehicle and horns there is no acoustic insulation of the buildings the people who are actually exposed to noise can protect themselves provided they are educated that there is something called noise pollution and that it can affect their health in short and long term so and people should also be educated as to how to protect themselves from noise pollution so if there is health education of the general public people will be aware and they will protect themselves from noise pollution